So first of all, thanks for having me uh, on stage here. So my talk is about uh, automation, right? So it's a little bit uh, less focused on the network, but more focused on, let's say, the operational side of how we operate the network. And I w this morning when I w was waking up, I said, OK, maybe I should have called this autonomous uh, instead, of, but it actually doesn't pronounce very well, right? So I, I think, so I started with automation. And if you look at it, um, if you go to the next slide, yeah, so the, the key question is, I, when, what I was trying to talk about is like, can we go to a full autonomous network operation, I would say, right? Because you could say today that if you look at IP, we actually operate in an autonomous way, right? Because we scale the internet, we actually build networks that operate independently together, and we basically build a whole IP communication called the internet, right? Now, what we don't do today, in my view, is actually operating that network through 100% through machines, right? And so here is an example uh, of a few uh, industries that actually have done that, right? So the key question here is, can it be done? And the answer is, if you look to these examples, the answer is yes, right? Now, as networking people, are we ready to give the keys to the machine? So that's the key question, right? So if you go to the next slide. So in order to actually set the stage, I think we first have to uh, level set to say what we are talking about, right? Because if I look to IP and I'm actually coming from the world of actually operations, right? So the way I actually manage network is through what we call finger-defined network. And today, I think a lot of people still in this room probably operate in that mode, right? What we are actually talking about, and so this is actually TM forum based uh, terminology, is actually going from a level one to a level five. What a level five actually means is actually operation through machines, 100%, okay? That's kind of where we have to envision ourselves towards, and the question is, of course, whether you want that to happen, right? So that's, of course, a choice you have, but that's probably one of the things that we have to consider, right? And there's a number of things that uh, are important to actually get there, right? Now, first of all, I think there is two aspects that I wanted to highlight. Is one is you go from humans to machines, right? And I'm not saying it has to be 100%. So you can actually go there with machines giving you recommendations and then humans assisted and stuff like that to a mode of operation where actually the machines actually do more and more and more of that work, right? So that's how we have to think and consider it. The second thing that I think is important is collaboration, right? So we operate a lot of our networks through individuals, right? And I think that's another important aspect that we actually have to change, right? So we have to more think about the team, sharing the knowledge, sharing the information that we as humans have gathered along the ways of operating that network, such that actually we can give more and more control through the machines, right? So that's kind of where we uh, have to talk about or what we have to consider uh, here. Now, if you go to the next slide, there is actually the state of affairs that was actually gathered, right? And so what is interesting to see is that I, most of it are actually in the level one and level two uh, category, which was I expecting. The key question is there are people in level five. So I don't know whether anyone in this room <laughs> considers themselves as a level five um, operation. I would love to talk to them. <laughs> to see how they do that, right? But that's actually, and I'm not sure whether we actually have to fully get there, right? But we have to think of a mode in which more and more machines are actually able to help us drive and operate the network, such that we can sit and relax and go to the conferences like here and actually have people do the job for us, right? So that would be an easy uh, life for all of us. So now, why did we not go there? So the next couple of slides are actually talking a little bit, why did we not yet succeed, or why haven't we gotten there yet, right? And so I took three aspects that I would like to highlight. First of all, I think we did a stunning job to actually build the most autonomous and distributed network, right? Which is what I call the internet, right? And a lot of people in this room have contributed to that, right? And I think we have to be very proud and say, okay, we actually built the most difficult 
autonomous operation and I built the most difficult distributed network on the planet and the most wide scaled distributed network on the planet. So kudos to all of you who actually helped us uh, get here. What I think we didn't do a good job of, and which is a representation of here on the, the right hand side, is actually the operational aspect of things. So what I would say, if, if you go to IETF and we talk about SRV6 or microsits and stuff like that, there's a lot of people excited in the room, lots of discussions, lots of debate. If we talk about Yang and operational aspects of our systems, there is a little bit less interest, right? And I think this is one of the key reasons why we are not yet in that autonomous operation. Right? The second aspect, which is more, if you go to the next slide, looking at a vendor's perspective, right? And I think I have to say, because I've actually, uh, I've been building some of these uh, systems to actually get to an autonomous operation. And I have to say, as vendors, we make it difficult, okay? Because, what you see is that, first of all, when you look 10 years back and you, when you try to operate them as a machine, there was a lot of issues, right? And we get into a mode where basically we say we are all API driven, but if you look at how multiple vendors give you that capability, it is very different. Secondly, I think we basically try to standardize upon Yang as our uh, technology. And I have to say there is very few vendors on this, uh, so in this, in this conference, who actually deliver you a 100% uh, Yang compatible system. I'm not talking about a data model that is unified. I'm talking about every operation in the system that can be modeled or operated through a Yang based system. I think there's very few vendors here. And it took us, by the way, a long time as well to get there, but we finally did it. But I have to say, if you do that across the board, that is not a given. And as a result, if you are a consumer of that system, that means that you actually have to do all kinds of things to get around these type of operation. And that basically constrains people to consume our systems in a way that we can operate uh, through machines. Right? If you go to the next slide, I think the next slide is then talking more from an, let's say, operator perspective. I think we have a few challenges, right? Because building that autonomous operation is different than building an autonomous or an internet-based system, right? So the skills that we need to do that is a bit different. The second reason I think is trust, right? Given the years of experience where people try to operate through machines and failed and try to actually give away the keys to the kingdom to the machines, people have, don't have the full trust to actually give or do that, right? And then thirdly, I have to say is that if you ask me when we talk about automation, I see this as we actually build a system, right? It's not like a few scripts that do something. We actually have to architect it in a mode that actually we build another system. And what is important there is actually we have to build it in a way that we can do the life cycle of that in a very easy way, right? Because if we build it and we have to change it every time when the new thing comes along, that is not really sustainable. So we have to really think and architect that system as a product, right? And you have to do that in a way, whether you build that as a system integrator, as a vendor, or as, a, as, a, as an operator, you actually have to build that in a way that is easy to manage and easy to operate and, and easy to control the life cycle of that system, right? So dwelling on, on those two, three topics, right? So what, you, what we see in order to improve the skills, right? So first of all, collaboration and building that system that gives you that collaboration is going to be important. Of course, AI plays a role in that as well, right? So we see that AI can help us gain that skills and gain that information in a more powerful way and, and easily consumable way, right? So of course, AI will play an important role uh, in that. The second piece is actually trust, right? So if you look at the trust side of things, the first important thing is to the vendors is to build system 
that we can operate at scale, right? So you don't have to be afraid to actually have a machine interact with a device, get the information out that is important to actually uh, compute a certain operation and see what is actually happening inside, right? Of course, change control together with digital twins, as Kiriti was talking about, is actually important also according to us because when you actually want to do a change and to gain trust, you actually want to see that actually that thing is validated and you can actually validate it on a digital copy before you actually implement it into a system. So gaining trust is actually an important uh, aspect uh, with that and actually using that, that system uh, is critical. And then lastly but uh, least is actually the system uh, control is building that system in a way that you can easily operate it through a structured mode of operation with the full lifecycle control is the uh, third element um, that uh, we have to consider, right? So going to the last slide is the key question to all of us. Are we ready and can we do it? I think the answer is yes, but it actually is a journey. And the question to all of us in the room here, are we ready to let go, right? Because we operate uh, most of our networks through humans. And the question is, do we want to get the control through the machines? So with that, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>